I bought these for around 40 bucks, and what did I get? Well, let's take a closer look. After losing my previous headphones, the Edifier X3 True Wireless Buds, I decided to try something new. In fact, I decided to shop around for Chinese wireless earphones on AliExpress, knowing that I've actually got more than half decent Bluetooth headphones from there for around $30 to $40 just a year back. If you're curious, I'm talking about these KZZSM Pro headphones if you want to check them out. I really recommend them and actually still use them to this day. I'll leave a link for both the wired and wireless versions in the description below. So let's get back on track with the KZZ3 True Wireless headphones. These earbuds are set to feature a hybrid driver configuration with one 10mm dynamic driver and one balanced armature driver. They are based on the Qualcomm QCC 3030 chip, which is often used in mid to entry level devices like these. The overall design of both the buds and the charging box also looks reasonably solid at the first glance, but in a bit we will see what they really look like in practice. They are supposed to support Bluetooth 5.2, carry a 300mAh battery in the case and have a range of 15m max. No noise cancellation here. The sales page claims that the battery will grant you 6 full hours of use, but knowing how it usually is with these listings, I'll be sure to do my own test. The single headphone mode is set to be there, the battery in the box should be reasonably big, and there is also a low latency mode available. It's supposed to give us around 40 millisecond latency when activated, but we'll see how well this works in practice. So, after waiting for quite some time, I finally ended up with these here in the studio. Let's unpack these bad boys and see what's inside the rather nice looking package I just received. If I'm honest, A plus for the box design. Let's see if the earbuds will live up to my now heightened expectations. Inside the box, besides the headphones themselves, we can find the charging case, four differently sized earbud tips, and a short USB-C cable which you can use for charging. And for the curious, no, it doesn't support data transfer. I checked. There is also an instruction manual here, which is pretty well written overall. Take a look if you care. When it comes to the design and my overall comfort rating for these after a few weeks of testing, it's almost exactly as you might imagine looking at them. They are quite big, in fact much bigger compared to my previous Edifier X3 earbuds. And no, they don't really seem to stick out, although they might be just a little bit more noticeable than my previous ones, both because of the white logo on each of the buds and larger glossy auto surface. The charging box is well put together, the plastic doesn't creak or bend and the hinge doesn't feel flimsy. It won't open easily by itself when in your pocket or backpack, and it snaps close with a satisfying click. The charging port is located on the bottom of the box and the charging LED indicator inside it. Overall, its quality is much better than I anticipated. Still, yes, it's just as prone to scratches as any average wireless headphone box. Here's what it looks like after a few weeks of carrying it in my back pocket. If you care more than me, you should get a carrying case for it. As you can see here, the headphones pair very quickly and they are also easily discoverable by both Samsung and Xiaomi devices I own. And here are all the pairing sounds and other sounds they make. Pair on. Pairing successful. Connect page. Disconnect page. Pairing. Connect page. I really should start a collection of these someday. Now let's talk about the sound quality, as after all this is the most important thing when it comes to headphones. And yeah, I know that this is a very subjective topic. For me, the audio quality of this is somewhat average for True LS headphones in this price range and it's certainly not the best I've experienced from this brand. Especially when compared directly to the previous KZZSN Pro models I mentioned in the beginning of this video. These, however, are still just fine when it comes to overall music or podcast listening experience, but personally I needed to tweak the EQ settings on my phone quite a bit until I got what I wanted out of them. After these tweaks though, I was able to get results that were more than reasonably satisfying for me. The highs are well pronounced and to be honest for me even too harsh without toning them down with an EQ, but not as clear as on the KZZSN Pros. The mids, well for me they are way too present, often drowning out the bass in the default flat EQ configuration. I had to turn them down quite a bit to get an enjoyable experience listening to most of my favorite tunes. The bass, well the lows are there and they certainly are the worst, however don't expect miracles from these drivers. A good thing is that they don't really overwhelm the whole frequency spectrum like on some other cheaper models that I had the pleasure to test. Overall, I'm quite surprised that for me these aren't really up to the quality of the much cheaper and much more popular KZZSN Pro models. Still, I will gladly keep them for on-the-go use. A neat feature that not all cheaper True Wireless earbuds have is the previously mentioned single headphone mode, in which you can leave one earbud in the charging box and freely use the other one. It works just as expected, with no issues with sound cutting off when leaving one earphone in the box or when putting one back inside during audio playback. No surprises here. The sound isolation is alright, but it's nothing to write home about. And as I've mentioned before, the headphones do not support any kind of noise cancellation. The low latency mode does work pretty well. There is a small yet noticeable difference in the perceived audio delay after turning it on. 
While you will still experience some delay when the low latency mode is engaged, it's much lower than on the Edifier X3 or the KZZSN Pro headphones I had the pleasure to test a few years back. I was able to confirm that when moving about 15 meters away from the phone in a straight line with no obstacles, the sound remains clear and uninterrupted. In most real life scenarios, I doubt you would need more range than this. Now, the battery. Well, as it was already said, the box features a 300 mAh battery and can be charged using the supplied USB-C cable. The charging port is conveniently placed on the bottom of the charging box and the charging indicator LED is hidden inside it. This means that you need to open the box each time you want to check if the buds and or the box are fully charged. The box should be enough for about two additional charges of the headphones. Of course, in theory, you could double that using only the single headphone mode. When it comes to the battery life, I did a test running my goofy playlist in the background at full volume after fully charging the earbuds and started editing this video. Just before four hours have passed, I got the less than 10% battery left warning on my phone and shortly after the left headphone ran out of juice. A few minutes later, the right one did the same. Interestingly enough, after the earbuds completely turned off, by putting them back in the box for about a few seconds and resetting them, I was able to squeeze extra 15 minutes of use out of them. In general though, you shouldn't let lithium-ion batteries fully discharge, as it can really affect their maximum charge capacity in a negative way. So, according to my little test, we get about 4 hours of use. Pretty good score if you ask me. Although nowhere near the 6 hours mentioned in the product listing, which I presume was tested at closer to 50% volume. What else? Uh, well, there are a few shortcuts you can use, as you might expect, and they all work just right. Tapping the right headphone twice lets you play the next song, tapping the left one comes back to the previous one. Holding down opens your currently set Smart Assistant app, and when someone is calling you, you can answer with one tap and reject the call with a long press. What I noticed is with these earphones it is much harder for me to accidentally click their sides when I'm taking them out or putting them in my ears than on the much smaller Edifier X3s. Still, sometimes the presses don't register correctly because the capacitive area doesn't seem to cover the whole external area of each earphone. Other than that, the overall experience is pretty good, even though the earphones themselves are quite big compared to the other models that I've used. The shape and design is well thought out, and for me they are very comfortable to use. And I almost forgot about the mic test. This is the microphone quality test. This is what the microphone sounds like on these headphones. So, to sum it all up, would I recommend this model for the price I got it for? Yes, but there are better choices out there. Mainly the KZZSN Pro headphones I've already mentioned a thousand times, which I'm very happy with, still using them over two years after I got them from AliExpress. The only true downside to them is that, as far as I know, they aren't available in the true wireless form factor. In my personal experience, the sound quality is much better compared to the KZZ3 earbuds and they do seem more comfortable to me when I'm wearing them for extended periods of time or when working out. If you want to see more of me rambling about some other devices like this and sometimes about some cool AI software, please do subscribe to the channel or leave a like or a comment under this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!